this, this disturbance of the universe, however scientifically argued, is philosophically absurd. It contradicts scripture. Psalm 104. O Lord my God, thou art great indeed. Thou fixed the earth upon its foundations, not to be moved forever. Exactly my point. And remember the words of Solomon. The sun also riseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to the place whence he arose. So much for science. He's pulled a little thread loose, unraveling a skein. He's picking at the fabric, the pattern's under strain. He's pulling into pieces, the weaving and the weft. He's rending it asunder, till there's nothing left. Solomon spoke by God's inspiration. was well enough to give guidance, but alas. I wonder if the College of Cardinals and Bishops should be preparing someone, someone with the required knowledge of science and mathematics, don't you think? Someone to argue against this man? Why argue with a dangerous lunatic? The Inquisition can soon deal with this. Oh, do hold your peace. Brother, what are you trying to say? Dear Brother Barberini, you know as well as I, the Holy Father's fading and very soon will die. The keys of great St. Peter must soon be handed on, and you're the man to follow when he's dead and gone. You do me too much honor, could I be worth that universal title, Vicar of Christ on earth? And as for through his telescope. I'm sure he can find plenty of other things to occupy himself with. Professor Clavius, what do you think? Well, I heard he was studying the movement of falling bodies, an experiment in Pisa. He drops cannonballs from the top of the leaning tower. Balls? Well, I suppose that's acceptable. As long as he doesn't damage any of the church masonry. Scientists. 